Hello again, friends. It's 12 8 2021, and this is the Odin Project vlog day 11. So, before we get started, today is, today is actually on CSS. Uh, but before we get started, I wanted to show you guys, uh, I want to make good on my uh, promise, if you will, I talked about yesterday in the video. I, I figured out how to do the history, show the history commits. So, if you click here, I, I could have figured this out. It was like, <laughs> I figured it out like five minutes after I completed the video yesterday, but I didn't want to horse around with it live on the video and make it any longer than it needed to be. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So here's the the ch modifications, the uh, commit modifications. Um, and um, so you can see when I did it, you know, the ID and, and what I typed in for the comment on the on the commit um, and it, it, it stamp time stamps it and has a unique just wanted to show you that um, just because I said I didn't know how to do it and I wanted to look it up always want to be a learner right learner forever forever so um, getting back to the foundations so <clears throat> We won't be getting to the text editor tonight. Um, this is actually a really beefy topic. Uh, they start out hot and heavy uh, in the foundations of CSS. So I wanted to wanted to basically step through this. Um, so um, here we go. Um, I noticed that some some of my uh, this is a vlog, and the journey is meant to keep going on. Um, through each day that I work on it so but I do notice there's kind of a trend on my channel that the days that I don't actually get onto the text editor I, I tend to get less views and, and that's okay I didn't make this I made I made this for all of us I made this for a journey and a vlog and so if you feel like you want to skip today you can skip today um, and, and tomorrow we'll be back on the text editor so today's just gonna be an introduction going over CSS it's quite a big page here and then we'll be going over some uh, a little more github uh, cloning and repos at the very end so uh, like I said if you want to stick around I would I'd love to have you and take you along on the journey here so um, but if you don't that's cool too so CSS this is a, a little more of a struggle bus for me today uh, learning this uh, so today's learning lessons I'm not gonna read this word for word but I will tell you the bullets uh, add styles to HTML and CSS understand how to use class and ID attributes add styles to specific elements using the correct selectors and understand what the cascade does so I have a lot less <clears throat> knowledge in CSS than I even thought originally so <coughs> excuse me so this was quite a bit of work um, excuse me so here's how you start out you have a selector which is outside the brackets and inside the brackets you have what they call the property and then the value is what that property uh, represents so this would be 700 which I believe is bold uh, for font weight is basically font weight if I remember correctly from reading here um, is just the boldness of the font and then that is represented by the div dot bold text selector um, and we'll get into that uh, so here's just an example of using uh, 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 excuse me <clears throat> asterisk and uh, asterisk is a wild card for all um, j universal as they call it here um, and it's just it's just simply showing you that you could use this it's not recommended but it would be this means if you put this in your CSS this means that everything every element every HTML element will be uh, color purple so the font color I believe that's font color will be purple and then you have uh, type selectors so here's div so this, this would be for we haven't talked about divs too much in HTML but this would be the uh, selector for the div attribute or the div uh, tag and that font color would be white <clears throat> and um, yeah here all three divs would be selected Oh, it talks about uh, yeah type selectors. So, yeah, so this would be white, this would be white, and uh, this would be white because it's calling div. So anything had div in it. Uh, cl class selectors. 
Um, here we have a class being called class ID alert dash text and dot alert dash text. If there's ever a period in front of a, sl a selector um, declara declaration, that means that it's calling the class. So we're calling the alert dot class and it's the or alert dash text and it's the same name and the color of the font will be red. So this would be red. Um, and we move on to ID selectors. ID selectors are, are we'll read down or if we don't, I'll just cover it right now since I remember it. ID selectors are rarely used. In fact, it's not recommended to use them because they don't you can only have uh, you cannot have multiples. Like you can't have you can have multiple classes inside of this div, but you cannot have multiple IDs inside of this div and it talks about the advantages later on. But um, just for the sake of this discussion, uh, ID is very is a usable attribute, but it's very rarely used and should not be used as a normal practice. But you can use it, and ID is represented by pound, so it'd be calling pound title, which would be title here for ID, and the background color will be red. And then it talks about grouping selector. Um, it go. Ooh, I remember this one. Do I remember this one? Um, okay, yeah, so it's just talking about example of groups. Um, so anything that has like a dot read um, would be class, as we just learned. So <coughs> anything with the class attribute of read would, uh, would get the color background of white and the background color, uh, or the color, font color white, excuse me. Been a long day at work today. And the background color of black. And then anything with the class of unread will be white color and background color black. And um, so they're saying that instead of doing this, which is totally fine, and that's probably how I would honestly do it, you could do it this way to combine it. So basically they're saying if anything is has a class attribute of read or unread, uh, it would get the color white and the background color of black. And then you could actually then separate it out and say anything that's just period red will have this set of attributes or declarations and the unread will have this set. It's just a way of being able to basically take this and shorten it down to this, which is cleaner looking too, and you, but yet still retain that u uniqueness. Um, uh, chaining selectors. So here it's talking about. Um, this is where I got a little foggy. I hadn't heard of this before either. I just never learned it or skipped over it pre previously in my studies with the other program. Uh, but how I understand it is, like I actually read this twice to try to understand it. So I think what it's saying essentially is <coughs> you have a period subsection dot header. Okay. And then, so what this is saying is the subsection class with the header class mentioned, which is this one here that I highlighted, will have the color red. So this latest post will be red. This actually, since it says subsection, it's class, but since it has the word preview after it, it actually won't be colored red because this one is calling out specifically the the header um class now it did mention above I kind of skipped over the text but when you put a space in between your classes that's that's uh, you're telling the HTML the browser that you have uh, that's not a that doesn't mean subsection header that's actually two different uh, classes you have a subsection class and a header class the space differentiates the two so the browser will read it and HTML read it as subsection class header class not subsection header class if that makes sense so they're two separate and then this is combining them and call it they call it chaining uh, where you're basically telling CSS is telling HTML I want to combine these together as one essentially please leave a comment in the uh, description or in the comments below if if I am wrong on that like very well could be and I'm okay with that we're all learning here. And then we go down to descendant, com descendant combinator. 
and this is basically kind of like a parent-child relationship. So this basically says, I'm I'm wanting to call the declaration for the um, the style CSS ancestor, the class ancestor, and class contents. And it says some declarations. So what it's doing is it's saying, I want to I want to add CSS to this. And I want to add CSS to this, but not to this, because this it does not fall under Ancestor. So this last content is its own parent. It's not a child of Ancestor, if that makes sense. So this is specifically saying, if you have a space in here in CSS, it's specifically saying, I want the child contents of Ancestor. Um, and that's what it, that's why these two are applied, but this one is not. And then it talks about color and background properties. Uh, basically, you have di three different ways you can do it. You can use hex, you can do R RGB, uh, Roy G Biv, um, and those values are are Googleable on the internet. And or you can do HSL. They didn't go over a lot of examples of this. You could go out to this link, which I did a little bit, and it <coughs> it goes out to the W three schools where you can just kind of read over it. But um, for the sake of uh, time here, I'm going to skip over that part. Um, and then it goes down and talks about uh, it, calling it uh, the height and width and using an Im IMG for image, for, for your our images. Um, and it, it says basically leave height to auto and then only change width, PX is pixel. Because when you do that, it will retain the uh, correct ratio, height to width ratio, versus if you put a number in here and a different number in here, the image file is likely going to get all jacked up because it won't re maintain the same ratio. And then it goes into cascading <coughs> and uh, talks about specificity, saying that ID selectors are most specific, class is next, and type is last, which me basically means uh, the quick and dirty way to say this is that the ID selectors, which is your um, your pound, whatever whatever it is, pound example, those would be those would come most priority. I mean, she means that those would be the browser and CSS will look at those first, and anything with class selector, which is your period dot, excuse me, your period dot would be um, ignored. Um, until all these were processed and then type selectors are are like the image here the you know the basically tag specific stuff so that's in this these examples just go over different examples of that I'm kinda running over time here as far as how much I wanted to cover tonight and keep these videos digestible so you can go out here to the CSS Foundation to read more in depth on this. It basically just goes through different examples of how cascading works. How it's very important to understand. I'm not trying to like blow through it as if it's not important. It's very important to understand. Um, it's just it's just I'm running out of time basically. So here's inheritance, and this basically uh, talks about kind of like we talked about before. You have ancestry, a parent, and child relationships. And this one's just give an example of so for ID parent, ID parent color red, ID child blue blue, and it says despite the parent element having a higher specificity with an ID, the child element would have the color blue since this declaration is directly targeting it, while color red from the parent is only inherited. Uh, it's just giving examples again. Uh, you're gonna it, to really dive into it, you're gonna have to read it. Um, my video isn't going to explain it 110% clear, but they talk about uh, rule ordering, um, basically uh, whichever rule was last defined is the winner. If everything else considered equal, uh, you know, as far as the cascading, the last thing that wins is the last thing that's on there. So if you have in this example excuse me you have a alert and warning they're both class uh, they're both uh, um, class types I'm losing my mind here um, uh, yeah class types uh, the this one would be the priority one because it's coming in last so 
Um, oh, and then it talks about external CSS. So this is basically it clean, creating href called styles.css that uh, rel, rel, I don't remember what that stands for, uh, rel attributes required, rel relationship. Okay, this is just saying what it is. It's a style sheets, of course, it's .css. They said you can name anything you want, but it has to be .css when you create the file, the cascading style sheet. Uh, but most common is style or styles and this lives in your head file if you're creating external CSS and then here is the here's a example of that CSS and this is the example of the HTML there you go index.html um, so basically it's sitting it's sitting in the same folder structure and you're just referencing it in your index file um, kinda like we did well exactly like we did for the recipes uh, project the other type is internal CSS. Basically, you're writing the CSS inside the style uh, tags inside the HTML. So you don't have an actual CSS file. It just it's just written inside. It, this is a okay way to do it, except your um, your HTML will get bloated and kind of messy over quickly by doing it this way. So the you can do it that way. It's a it's a standard practice. This is the best, cleanest, best practice, external CSS, if you can do it like that. And then the worst case, the basically the way they don't recommend it is inline CSS, where you literally don't call CSS, but you put your uh, style information and your attributes and your values inside of the actual uh, uh, div tag on HTML, within the HTML file. This is not recommended at all because, as you can see, it gets messy and bloated really fast, and it dramatically increases the number of places you have to you have to change your files and change your attributes around. So it basically just says there's a very rarely will you ever want to do this. There's only one specific way that this actually is beneficial, but it doesn't really go over it, and it says it'll go over it later. So, and then it goes down to the practices. Uh, I. Like I said, we're not hitting the editor tonight, but I, I did go out here to the CSS exercises repo and, and it basically says to download and clone it and get started. So if you go out here, if I go to my GitHub, you'll see I have CSS exercises. So what you do is you go out here basically, the link takes you here and then you click this here to fork and then it basically forked it automatically within a couple of seconds it forked it inside of my my repositories and now I have see it says forked from the Odin project CSS exercises so now this actually lives inside my 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 github my my popular repositories <clears throat> and then and then it says to go ahead and clone it down as we've always done so what you do is you go in here go to code I, won't drop it down because it'll reveal some SSH, but you drop it down here, select SSH to get your SSH link, and then go in the terminal and um, and commit it. So, or copy it down locally, um, and that is about it. And then you'll have it locally, and that's where I stopped. So I didn't go any farther. I my brain felt full after that. So. Um, this is it um, for today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the ride with me and sorry that this one took a long time. I kind of knew it was going to take a while. There was really no way to really speed through this. As you can see, the foundation's <laughs> page is quite meaty. So, um, yep, 43% complete-ish. Um, so, tomorrow we will get into the text editor and we will be doing CSS. Until next time, talk to you later.